Welcome to the Ralph Bivens Project. My name is Ralph Bivens. We're here today to, well, first let's start with, you know, uh, you know, an announcement, an announcement, a major news announcement, okay, uh, about the Realty News Report Development of the Year Awards and uh, the project of the year uh, is East River, which is, you know, 150 acres on the edge, eastern edge of downtown, and they've got a lot of construction over there. It's a real beehive uh, of activity and uh, construction activity on the ground with uh, several different kinds of uses there. And we're really fortunate today to have with us Anna Deans. She is uh, at Midway, the developer of that project. And uh, she's working in tandem with David Hightower over there at East River. And, um, and Midway, of course, is a Houston company that has uh, done some very interesting projects. And uh, uh, they're one of, one of the, one of the thinking type of companies that are doing development here in Texas. There's some very interesting projects and results have been cool, like city center there on the Katy Freeway. Anna, welcome very much. We appreciate you being here. For having me. The, uh, you know, you've got uh, East River. Um, we know it's near downtown and uh, we know it's on the bio. And you know when we talk about you know transformative projects, um, this is one of them. And, and uh, just speak to me for us for a second about that. And, you know the sure. this, how did, why would why would you say it's a, a you know, transformative project? Yeah, I mean it. It truly is. It's like you said, 150 acres, um, which is the largest contiguous undeveloped tract within the 610 loop. And it's only one mile east of downtown. It's located in the historic Fifth Ward, which is this really amazing, culturally rich neighborhood. Um, and it's adjacent to the second ward. Um, but the, the site has been inaccessible for over 70 years. It's the former Brown and Root campus. Um, Brown and Root, uh, there are engineers who developed things like the Astrodome, NASA Mission Control, um, the first offshore oil platform. So the site has this history and legacy of innovation. Um, but like I said, it's it's been totally walled off. Uh, and when we started working on the project, the site was completely vacant, so a blank slate. Um, it also has over a mile of water frontage along Buffalo Bayou. And the bayou here really feels more like a river. We found some historical maps where it actually says Buffalo River on the on the map, and that's that's actually where the name East River came from. Um, but when you when you kind of think about all these things together, it it really highlights how unique of an opportunity this is, not just for the East End and the Fifth Ward, but for all of Houston, because we have an opportunity to really kind of rethink, um, take a step back, and and create a destination that will hopefully represent all Houstonians, um, and also change the way that people perceive the bayou, you know? Uh, this is one of the, the few locations where private development will be allowed to occur directly adjacent to the bike trail in the bayou. And so just helping shine a light on what the bayou's done for our city, um, what the port has done for our city, our rich maritime history that just not a lot of people are aware of. Um, so those are just a few things, but it's it's, the, the scale of it is also really hard to kind of wrap your head around. Uh, for context, it's 150 acres is equivalent to about 60 downtown blocks. That's about a fifth the size of downtown. So this is a 15 to 20 year project. Uh, we've just started on the first phase, which is about the size of city center. So when this is all complete, there will be essentially five or six city centers within this site. So it's a mini city, uh, right? The, uh Back up a second, then let's uh, tell me a little bit more about you know being on the banks of Buffalo Bayou, formerly known like, you know, 150 years ago as Bayou River, maybe. The, uh, but the, yeah, it's it's uh, it, that's been a big part of uh, how Houston got started back in the 1800s. I guess was that 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 body of water, uh, which is you know it's. Yeah, I don't know if it's become everything it, it should be. I mean, parts of it have really been elevated, but what else? Tell me 
What else do you think can happen there? It's it's actually pretty interesting. There's a lot of things that are already happening on the on the bayou that um, a lot of people aren't even aware of, and so I think highlighting that and amplifying that is is very important. Uh, for example, there's you know the Buffalo Bayou Partnership Regatta where 300 kayakers and canoers go 15 miles annually. Um, which hopefully someday we can we can bring all those kayakers to East River. Um, I've done it a couple of times. It's it's beautiful and it's a beautiful perspective of our city that that most people have never seen. Uh, there's actually entire regattas of trawlers that that even come from Kima and Galveston annually come down uh, the river and go to Allen's Landing. And so really trying to connect with those groups, install docks, you know, potentially along the bayou at different locations, starting to connect all these different waterfront communities. And I think over time, you'll start to see developments that may have historically not acknowledged or embraced the bayou, try to, you know, turn that around. Similar to what you saw in Chicago a long time ago, uh, the Chicago River was, was neglected. Everything was just dumped into it. Developments turned their back on it. And now it's one of the you know, features of the city. And so obviously there's a lot of differences there, but I do think that that uh, Buffalo Bayou can become a real, a beautiful natural amenity that, that we all really learn to appreciate much more than we do now. With docks? Docks, docks boats, yes. Drop and pick up people. For boats, yes, yes. Um, so we're planning the, the next phase of the development now, and, and that's something that we'd like to incorporate uh, I know Buffalo Bayou Partnership has plans for a number of row houses just a little bit further east from East River. And so activating the water is is uh, definitely on our priority list. But even just, just the way that we've designed the plan to embrace views of the water and downtown, we have a lot of green space in this first phase that is on the sloped bank adjacent to the water. And the views across the water to the, the silos and the trail system are, are really beautiful and most most people when they come up in the building for the first time and see that it's it's surprising because it is so much wider there and it's just a view that most people have not seen of our city yeah, it, it is it uh, i've never been on the, the, the brown <laughs> and red campus and you go over there and this the the view of the skyline is phenomenal and you're getting it from the east side and you know the astros I mean, it made Park Stadium is kind of there in the foreground instead of not seeing them. But, but of course, all the major buildings in the background. And it's yeah, and the, pretty phenomenal. the water, it, it's neat because the, the water really kind of snakes its way towards downtown. And you can see that view from the site. Um, and it, and it's, it's, it's perfect, really, because the Allen brothers took that same waterway when they discovered the city originally. Hmm. Um, and so that that's all things that we want to embrace and talk about. And with the Houston Maritime Museum moving to East River and, you know, hopefully we can start having festivals around the maritime industry and really, you know, get people engaged in that history. So we're really excited about it. Phase one right now, uh, 26 acres. Uh, what, what all is being built? So right now under construction, we have the Laura, which is 360 apartment units. We have two office buildings nearing completion. Uh, we call that East River One and Trailhead One. Trailhead One is on the waterfront. Uh, we have a district parking garage. We have retail in the base of all of our buildings. That's a very important part of all of our developments to activate the ground plane. Uh, and then we have some freestanding free retail buildings along the waterfront with large patios uh, that have used a downtown and the bike trail. Uh, in so addition to that, we have a couple of, of park spaces, uh, mm -hmm. bike trails that will be completed to connect all of that together and then back up to Clinton. One thing that struck me, 100,000 square feet of retail, uh, I think a lot of that's gonna be restaurant. Uh, that's, that's a lot. How's that, tell, talk to me about the restaurant and retail sure so the we were very fortunate to have a lot of early adopters of this project that really believed in the project and signed on early on to to be our partners at east river um, so we have a great lineup of tenants that are already working on their plans and about to start their build out 
Uh, one of the larger ones is the Astorian, which they have in a, a wedding event venue in Sawyer Yards area now. This will be their second location, but it's on the rooftop of that waterfront building. And they have also have a an outdoor bar that will be open to the public where you can see downtown. Uh, when we first started talking to them, we said, please do something that the public can can come up and see this view. We just don't have many great rooftop places here in Houston. And so that's that's what they're working on. So we're really excited about that. Uh, we have Johnny Rhodes opening a, a small, sustainably minded grocery store uh, in the garage. He's a Fifth Ward resident, James Beard Award nominated a couple times, I think. And so uh, this this area is a food desert. And while this won't, you know, completely fill that need, it, it is cool to see someone from the neighborhood trying to help fill the gap. Um, and so we're really excited about that. We have some basic services that we're also providing for the neighborhood, dentist, optometrist, things like that. Um, and then the, the restaurant lineup, we're in negotiations with a number of different groups, but our goal is to have this feel very homegrown, um, very unique, um, not chain restaurants. Uh, we have a coffee shop opening called El Condor, which is, you know, really, really tailoring their design to the project. Um, and they'll be one of our first tenants to open with coffee in the morning and wine at night and uh, uh, activating the project for some of our early office tenants. So, so that's exciting. Yeah. I think uh, when we did our tour recently, there was a, <clears throat> a space uh, in, inside a, a, I guess it's inside a residential building that has where you took a you know container, a shipping container. Tell us a little bit about that. Is that uh, is that what's going to happen there? Sure. So I think what's really important for any project is to identify what makes that place unique, and embrace that and amplify that. So in a project like East River, the water, um, the Fifth Ward, the history of the site, these are all things that we wanted to shape the design of the project. And the industrial history of this area really led us to want to incorporate that design aesthetic into the project. So it really feels authentic. It's difficult to create an authentic feeling place from scratch. Um, and so one of the things we've done is incorporate shipping containers into lots of parts of the project and, and reusing those for different purposes. So in the residential lobby, for example, we have five shipping containers that we've stacked up in different configurations and they have different uses, uh, leasing offices, a dining area for residents, um, a record lounge, you know, coffee bar. And that's a theme that, yeah, I think you'll continue to see throughout the entire project. But when we were trying to lease this project in the middle of the pandemic, we did something similar. We felt a need to have people on site to experience the view. And so we took a couple of shipping containers and created a little leasing space out of them uh, that was totally off the grid, solar powered. So it really sold our you know, vision for sustainability. And that's where we had all those early meetings with, with prospects. And I think it really helped us kind of sell the vision, but, um, but yeah, course, embracing that industrial work. history with the design is really important. When you're, if you haven't been there before, also when you drive up uh, in the corner of Jensen and Clinton Drive there, uh, the entryway into East River has a mural painted on, um, and a really cool like a mural uh, painted by a local artist, as I recall, just uh, there right at that corner on the side of several shipping containers. And uh, it's, it's a great entry point. And it has Houston stuff. Yes. Yeah, it's David David. Maldonado. Stephen Maldonado. Yeah, yeah David uh, Maldonado David. is from the Second Ward. Um, the the astronaut motif is is something that he carries through a lot of his work, but we really wanted to show the showcase the bayou in that in that mural as well. And it was cool to see the the neighborhood embrace the space that that container uh, mural created at the corner when it first was completed. There were dance troops out there performing, families taking photos. I mean, it was the coolest thing to see, but it really highlighted the fact that I think the neighborhood needs community space and space uh, where they can express themselves. And so we hope the public space within the project can also help fulfill that need. Um, and we can incorporate a lot of that, you know, local programming artists and, and performers into some of the green space of the project as well. 
uh, another um, element that uh, we, we just announced, the uh, news was just announced on that this week, uh, are a couple of uh, office, freestanding office buildings, two stories, 10,000 feet. Uh, tell us, and they're for sale, right? Correct. Tell us Correct. about them. Sure. Yeah. They're called the studios. They're one of the few, uh, you know, ownership opportunities within East River at a smaller scale like this. It's a really unique opportunity. We um, we realized there was a, a little bit of a gap in the market in terms of uh, smaller for sale new product. And so these are 10,000 square foot warehouse looking, but very creative and beautifully designed by Sham Shea, a local architect. Um, office, creative office space, basically. And one of our first uh, building sales is to OJB and they are world renowned landscape architecture firm based here in Houston. They've designed everything at East River and, and most of our projects, including city center. So incredibly talented and we're just super excited to, to have them at East River in their permanent home. So uh, it'll be exciting to see what other owners we have adjacent to them you know, this is the first phase of many. So we see that face of Clinton being these kind of smaller warehouses that, you know, I could see there being an open house one night a month where people can kind of meander through the different, you know, studios and, and hopefully galleries and things like that. But it's pretty exciting. So that that broke ground just before Christmas and that'll finish about the first the same time as phase one. Yeah. Wow, that's cool. That's yeah. Oh. Uh, like OJB, I guess that that one time it stood for the office of James Burnett, that, that was a great landscape architecture guy that was started the company here and uh, done some really cool things like, well, the Levy Park that uh, you know your company was involved in developing there on by Kirby and Richmond, uh, which ended up winning an international award for. Uh, for being an open space from the Urban Land Institute, you know, it's just a great space, and so to have them there uh, is a real plus. And it's interesting. I, I know the guys. Uh, an interview I read uh, in the Chronicle with this guy he said, uh, "Chip, you know, he said we're gonna we'll be able to ride our bikes to work, you know." <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, yeah, yeah, they could they couldn't do that. If, Pins oil, you know. I, I don't know if I try to ride a bike in downtown. It's a little scary sometimes, but uh, that's a great tenant and you're in a great architecture firm. So that you're we're lucky there. What about the other office buildings? So the, in the the official part of the, your phase one, um, other tenants in there um, that you can tell us about? Absolutely. One of our our first tenants is method architecture they have been on board from the very beginning huge believer in the project in the east end and have done a lot of work in the east end their space is under construction now so they'll be uh, in east river one uh, the building adjacent to the garage and their their space is really cool very bright colorful funky and that's really the vibe of the east end and what we're trying to embrace here at east river as well uh, we also have Impact Networking in that same building. They're a full floor. Um, they're a managed IT services company. Um, and they'll they'll be starting work next week, actually. And then we have Teal Systems on the top floor, and they're right behind them. They're, they're in for permit, uh, moving very quickly. Their space is also going to be beautiful and um, have designed some really intelligent mechanical systems for the buildings as well uh, that will become a showcase in their space. So those are our first kind of early office tenants. And then the Maritime Museum was the most recent lease that we signed, which has been super exciting because it it just, uh, in, you know, fits our vision for the, the maritime industry being a huge part of this project. And I think that is a trend that will continue um, based on the leasing activity that we're seeing right now. And so that's really exciting to have this whole maritime ecosystem kind of coming together as part of the project. Great tie in. Perfect. It's, it's like meant to be or something. <laughs> we need to get a, one of the big shipping companies to uh, move their headquarters here. So, well, that, that's Absolutely. <laughs> 
Now, uh, okay, so, but this phase one, I believe is supposed to be finished what, in about a year or something? Uh, much sooner than that. There's parts of it that will be towards the end of the year, but the office tenants will be moving in in April, our first office tenants. So the buildings are nearing completion in the next month and the park spaces are just starting construction. Those will take a few months to complete. Uh, the bike trail will be a part of that. Our first units at the Laura will be delivered this summer and then that's a phase delivery. So throughout the end of the year, we'll have units delivering each month um, with it being complete towards the end of the year. And then you'll start to see the retail tenants open up in the fall and towards the end of the year as well. So we'll be we'll be totally done by the end of the year. Um, and, and some of our office tenants will be on site, you know, late spring. So it's 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 getting very exciting and real. Well, when there's a phase one, there's got to be a phase two. So uh, <laughs> tell us about your vision for phase two. Sure. We have we have two other buildings within this same area that will start later this year. And those are both office buildings with retail at the ground floor. Um, most likely those those may end up being single occupant buildings. And so we're we're kind of refining the design now and hope to get in for a permit um, in a few months. Uh, and then section two is really the whole next section of the project, uh, which is uh, we're working on a master plan now. We have master plans, but given what we've learned with phase one, we wanna go back, revisit, see, see what needs to tweak, uh, what need, can be approved upon. Uh, we like to build in a lot of flexibility into our plans to accommodate a lot of different types of users because throughout this process, we've seen all different kinds of, of users approach us about being in the project. And so building in that flexibility is really important. Uh, and then of course, continuing that, that kind of waterfront experience with this entertainment zone. There'll be museums along the waterfront in the next section, a hotel. Um, we'll definitely have office space in the next phase, but the potential to accommodate a larger campus if needed, um, but definitely continuing to activate the pedestrian zone, prioritizing the pedestrian and incorporating a lot of green space and bike trails throughout the entire project, basically. And you're redoing the master plan. Is that being done in-house with this? Program? No, we're working with Perkins and Will on that, yes. And so, we, you know, throughout the, the project, uh, the only thing we know for sure is that things are going to change. That's what we like to say, because uh, as time passes, um, you always want to take a second look at what you've done and, and apply what you've learned and, and even just changes in the market. And so uh, we're looking at the master plans that have been done in the past and, and also kind of looking at it with fresh eyes and, you know, how can we make this even better than it already is? Well, what are some of the lessons you've learned uh, through phase one? Well, going through the pandemic, the part of COVID, right. you know, not, so not, not, Originally, hopefully the COVID part won't happen again. You'll be in, a, in a, um, a better market that doesn't have crisis like that going on. But but what to, what tell us about what you've learned and what you're thinking. You know, with any large project, it's it's of this scale. It's um, it's just very unique, especially when there's no roads. Um, you're, you're essentially starting from scratch. And originally, the entire uh, first section was intended to start at once. But that's a that's a huge hurdle in terms of pre-leasing, in terms of um, getting everything to line up at the same time. And then and then when COVID hit, that became even more challenging. And so we ended up splitting that up into smaller sub phases, uh, which actually worked out much better because once we started the first phase, new prospects came to the project and we were able to adapt those other two buildings to meet different needs. Um, but I think ultimately building in as much flexibility into the plan day one as possible um, is a huge one. You know, designing a building that could be scaled up if you have a larger tenant and understanding day one where that additional parking would fit into the project. Um, allowing for opportunities for phasing and flexibility, timing of different things. So I'd say that's probably number one, is just building in as much adaptability and flexibility for change as possible as things, so that we can take advantage of opportunities as they come to us. 
Yeah, that, that, that makes sense. So, yeah. Yeah. No one knows what tomorrow may bring. <laughs> right. <laughs> and that's, that's, you know, that's, that's an important part of every project, but um, with, with this many different uses and parking configurations, and you just learn a lot of, of little things along the way about how to just make it a little bit easier to adapt. Of course, uh, and then further down there, we, we have seen, and this is uh, the opening last fall of the, the East River Nine golf course, uh, which is really cool. Tell, tell us about the, the golf courses. I know it, it's got a great view of downtown. It's nine holes and um, you know, it's, it's Clayton Frail's um, kind of been in charge of that. And you guys gave us a tour of that, uh, you know, at the end of summer or something. It was very impressive. But I understand it's open now. It is. Yes, it's open. <laughs> it's doing really well. Yes, it's. Um, they've had hundreds of, of tea times over the, the weekends, over the the last couple months and now they have pickleball courts open as well it's a nine hole par three golf course it's lit at night which is unique so if you wanted to go after work you could do that it's very casual it's very approachable uh, my husband for example who's never played golf just decided to start playing golf and has been going out there um, very frequently uh, <laughs> but it's also family friendly so you know you can bring your kids out there um it's it's a great space and he was able to adapt one of the old warehouses that were that was originally on the property into a, a restaurant and bar and so uh it's a great place to just go hang out i was talking to a resident yesterday actually who plays golf and said he's been there every day since it since it's open and i assumed he was there to play golf and he said no i just go and i just sit there and have a drink and have some food and enjoy the view it's beautiful and it is it's and it feels very natural too, which is a, a very strange thing to find so close to the urban core. You know, you can see downtown, but then you look across the bayou and there's this beautiful forest almost. And um, it's 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 a really, really nice place. So so it's amazing. We got that. Yeah, and you're right that the bar there, uh, you know, my friend uh, Phil Chave, you know, he did that. Uh, did this, these architect did design on the redoing that building there, and uh, which is a brown and root uh, maintenance building or something. There's <laughs> right. now it's a cool spot in a restaurant, and so it's very cool. And uh, I, just, I was really impressed with Phil's work. Um, yeah, did a great job. And you, yeah, I know a lot of. We haven't said that, but you know. Uh, you guys that didn't know, you know, Anna Anna does have an architecture degree, and from the University of Texas, it's great. And then uh, she's also, um, you know, worked at, at Gensler, uh, the, the, I guess the world's largest architecture company. And um, and before going, ending up and going into development with Thor Equities, and then uh, coming aboard at Midway and. Uh, about five years ago or something, I think. And uh, so, you, but this is, uh, tackling this one is really something. And uh, I was just amazed at the tour we did. It, it, it looked like, you know, um, those films I've seen of Elon Musk project, they're building the Tesla plant up there on the Austin. You know, they post it and it'd be like, this, it, it is like an ant bed, you know, 50 trucks moving around, all these guys, you know, it's, it's activities, the epicenter of activity. It's, it's pretty amazing. So I'm not surprised that you're going to have so much finish before the end of the year. But, uh, but I, I want to hear more about that, um, the phase two. You know, that, that's, that's what I'm, I want, want to see, because how soon could that happen? I know you got a plan with Perkins Will and and get everything with flexibility to move in the future, but what would be your time frame? Or that may not be decided, but what would your time frame be for 
starting on the phase two. I mean, I, I would love to start the roads and infrastructure as soon as possible. Um, if possible, by the end of next year, there's a lot of coordination that goes into that. And that's really David's, um, uh, my colleague, that's really his his responsibility. But having the roads start in advance of the buildings would make our lives a little bit simpler for one. But um, we, we actually have tenants that are already interested in being in this next phase. Um, food hall, for example, museum. Um, you know, we'll, we'll need a little bit of the office to lease up before we can build the hotel, but I don't think that's as far off um, uh, as we used to think. We've got a lot of great momentum. And then we, we actually have enough interest in the first phase that we may need to shift some of those users to this, this next phase. So it could happen very quickly. Um, well, you know, we'll start. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Hotel? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, just what, uh, you know, what genre of hotel are we are you thinking about there? It, it just needs to be really cool and unique. You know, it'll be waterfront. It'll be have those amazing views. It has to be special. And we haven't gotten too much into what that looks like or, you know, what, what the flag would be if we We'd probably have a flag just given our experience on other hotels. It really helps to have that base, but it needs to feel very custom and, and boutique. And so it would absolutely be a boutique, um, just kind of cool hotel, but. Um, kind of like similar to like the Moran there in, in city center, something like that. Um, yes, uh, similar, yes, in, in a lot of ways, but I think the one of the biggest differences between East River and City Center is is East River is just grittier. You know, we we like that creative, funky, like you know, almost DIY. There's a lot of maker space here, um, just kind of pure expression of function and exposed materials. That aesthetic will carry through the entire project, and so the hotel, I, I would imagine, will also be yeah. kind of have some grit to it. You know. Uh, yeah, well, you guys, you know, that I think you're involved in uh, some of those projects there in College Station that might have uh, very with creative flair and, and everything with how they're done. And they don't feel like, you know, the beige Marriott. They, uh, they feel uh, they got unique qualities to them. Right, right. That's something we try to do with all of our hotels is, is give it a very unique identity and whether people realize it or not that identity carries through every aspect of the design it's it's not so overt that it feels themed but the george is a great example of that mars designed that and if you look at some of the detailing um you can see just that theme carried through it at even the smallest level but it, it doesn't you know hit you over the head as you know being a certain theme or direction. So it would certainly, I think, pick up on the, the history of the area in some way or another. Well, we can't wait to see that. And you've <laughs> got to put it on the river. I can just imagine the, the, you know, the restaurant and bar and everything overlooking the, the water uh, would be very cool. Very cool. All right, Anna and the deans, thank you very much. Uh, enjoyed talking with you today. And uh, we'll check back later, and uh, we maybe someday. If you're a golfer, you know, hey, go out there, and uh, it's it's a great spot. It's a great spot. So we're we'll, we're eager to see more of what's happening at East River. But thank you for being here. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thanks so much for having us.